Hi everybody, I'm Jamie and I'm back to talk about Sjogren's and today I wanted to talk about something that literally took me a couple years to wrap my head around and I was kind of getting a little irritated because I couldn't figure it out um, and, and you know what this could change because this this disease is so understudied that there's still a lot of um, uh, scientific guessing I would say going on but I wanted to talk about the fact that everything you look up and read about Sjogren's being genetic is it says, all the research says it runs in families or that there is um, a family component, but they don't necessarily say that it's genetic. And why is that? So I've done some deep diving and I, I probably have my biggest aha mo uh, moment. I know I always bring up Sjogren's, um, the Sjogren's book edition five, um, because it's just the most up-to-date information and put out by the Sjogren's foundation in that book i finally went oh okay i think i got it um so because my, my mom has sjogren's disease it's my cuckoo clock <laughs> my mom has sjogren's disease my aunt has sjogren's disease i have sjogren's disease and we're pretty sure looking back that my grandmother who is now deceased has sjogren's disease because sjogren's is such a new autoimmune disease there's, there's not a lot of research on it and especially going back in family history. This was not something 20 years ago they could even diagnose us with. So we're kind of starting from scratch a little bit. There hasn't been too many twin studies actually done on, on Sjogren's disease, but what they look for when they do twin studies, identical twin studies, is that they want to see more than 15% of identical twins having the same disease to say that it's genetic. They have not found this yet with Sjogren's. Doesn't mean they can't in the future, but there's only been a couple cases um, and I'm going to go ahead and in the links put a couple research um, uh, articles that I have found, some studies that I have found on this. And in the Sjogren's book 5, chapter 8 talks a little bit about it and a few times it talks about uh, why this is. So in genetic twins, they just don't find it. Um, they, but what they have found is that it obviously, if we share antibodies within families, and we know that Sjogren's disease needs an external component to be triggered. So you could have SSA antibodies, but never actually experience the disease. And why that is, is this disease needs an, an external component, an environmental component to sort of, I guess, activate or trigger it or whatever word you'd like to put in there. But you're typically going to see most people can... Um, pinpoint their Sjogren's flare, their first flare up ever from a virus, a vaccine, a tremendous amount of stress, um, even a medication. I actually just put this question out on a big group and I got hundreds of comments. I was shocked to see how many people said that their Sjogren's was triggered by Epstein-Barr virus or um, uh, what they call mono. Um, some people in droves, COVID and the COVID vaccine triggered, and I, I think this is across the board, what everyone experienced with COVID and the COVID vaccine, a lot of more people have been diagnosed or struggling to get a diagnosis for Sjogren's or another autoimmune um, disease. So we know that there needs to be an external component. Does this make sense? It, it's kind of weird. <clears throat> Obviously there's a genetic component, and since this is 92%, depending on what research you see, it's 91% or 92% women that are affected. Some of us, like myself, did have Sjogren's as a child. So it's called childhood Sjogren's, but most are diagnosed um, starting at 40 to 60 years old. Obviously, if it's women and older women, there is a huge component when it comes to hormones. So they know that, they just don't know much about it. They don't even know why or how we have the disease. So we definitely want to push for more research to find out more because we are the second autoimmune disease um, as far as commonality right, behor right behind rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and it's actually more common to have Sjogren's than lupus. But lupus, for some reason, just I think it's because it's older, it's an older autoimmune disease. So we know a lot more about it and there's a lot more um, genetics about it. So if you have any questions about this, um, go ahead and put it in the comments. I'm not a rheumatologist, so if I said anything wrong or you want to gently correct me, go ahead and um, put it in the comments. Um, but I hope this helps some of you understand what the difference is between genetics and running runs in families because I'm a walking testament that it runs in families for sure. Um, so maybe we'll see a difference in the decades to come or even the years to come. Let's hope it's years and not decades before we get more information about this disease. In the meantime, take care of yourself and we'll talk soon.
bye